we have a double header tonight, I guess, uh, or this afternoon. We, we have our uh, part two uh, of our town board workshop where the uh, department heads are presenting their proposed budget as we dovetail, hopefully, to early September in our preliminary budget for 2022. And that, I think, is uh, we'll, we'll be in a meeting between 4.30 and the max 6.30. But then the second game of the doubleheader is at 7 p.m. tonight at a special time. Usually we start at 7.30, uh, but tonight we're starting at 7 p.m., uh, the regular town board meeting. So uh, without further ado, our first uh, presenter tonight is the Honorable <laughs> Donna Komar, the assessor for the town of Webster. Thank you. Now, I didn't watch, I have to confess, I didn't watch last week, so do you want me to start with the point ones? Anything there that you want me to go over? Changes? If you have any comments, sure. Yeah. Um, it's relatively stable, I would say. And the difference uh, between 21 and 22 on the compensation for employees, the largest line there, would be a title change for one particular um, person, and then there's step changes, etc. So the rest of it is usual, but the most of it's for a title change. Capital purchases, I didn't ask for anything last year, and the $1,000 that I'm requesting is uh, to replace a seven-year-old copier at the front counter, which gets a bit of service and, and uh, is starting to show its age. Everything else is pretty much stable. Um, I'm asking for some contractual services that were not in the budget last year because we are trying to use a little bit of technology to bridge some uh, some processes and automate a few things. So that's for about 10 hours of consultation services on some software that we've been writing to streamline some processes. Um, what else can we talk about? Appraisals. Appraisals and legal contractual expenses. That is the line that helps us to afford our small claims assessment review refunds when a person is um, going as far as the small claims assessment review and they um, are ordered by the court that we have to repay their filing fees. So there's those. Um, Article 7s are our Supreme Court litigation cases and this line covers those appraisals that we would have for the court ordered appraisals very much a reactionary sort of thing it's not it's very hard to predict and reassessments we're probably not going to spend that whole line this year it's gotten deferred because we had to put a pause on our program and we're going to pick that up for next year so I'm just asking that we budget that again for next year so that we could finish the first step of a reassessment project which will initially only affect our commercial properties. And uh, as we do get that rolling, I'll certainly in 2022 be notifying the, the commercial properties. Software maintenance contract has gone up just a little bit because we're adding a program. And so this will be for um, from July 22 on through the rest of the calendar year. Because we are positioning ourselves for a townwide revaluation in the future years, what I would like to do is give the taxpayers the opportunity to go online and make comments about the inventory that we have recorded for their property. So this uh, software tool would give us that opportunity to get the feedback from the homeowners directly um, through a software package, which is just couples up with one that we already have. And that's about it. Do you, are there any questions that I can answer for you? Well, mine isn't so much of a question as it is a comment, and, and I wish Brayton Connor was here, but I think he's on vacation this week. Um, you, you have had a lot of challenges in the last several months with uh, your, your personnel and your department kind of turning over and different things. Again. And, <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I, and I really, and I think yeah. that you and Brayton and the powers that be, you, you've handled it about as well as can be expected. It's, it's. Uh, Thank you. It's been challenging. It is. So if I'm not at my desk, I'll be back shortly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So. You're currently looking to fill two positions, right? We do. We have two yeah. full-time openings right now Let's in, our, a in bit. our department. All right. Well, you have to be on a civil service list. This is the okay. thing, right? So um, we're advertising for a full-time assessment clerk 
and um, an appraiser. So this is a municipal appraiser. You don't necessarily need to be New York State licensed, certified residential appraiser or commercial appraiser, but you need to have some background in that. So that's the position I think is going to be more challenging to fill, and that is the one that we hope to fill soon so that we can proceed with this revaluation. Yes. Very good. Donna, I was Next looking at questions? the line and the paper in front of me, and it was A1355.10023 part-time employees, but I don't see it there. Ah, huh? there we go. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. 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 And, and there, yeah. Oh, therein lies the title change I was referring to. Okay. And the part time line. All right, thank you. Yep, thank you for pointing that out. So the other is just step increases in union contract administration. Yep. Okay, that makes more sense. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thanks for correcting it. Um, well, is Steve? Yep, big Steve is behind the uh, okay. pillar. Is that Steve? Okay, good. Right. Um, we don't, want to, we don't want to short you on your time. Um, I don't have anything else to present. I'm happy to answer any questions or, right. or move on and let you get on with your evening, as you said. Just quick, outside of the budget, uh, yeah. interesting year for you and the Board of Assessment Review um, as far as cases and things like that, people that have... Uh, the one that we just completed? Yes. Yeah, because as you know, our year is different than your budget year, right. so it's always interesting for me to be here. Um, the, the calendar year for the assessment goes July to July. Right. And then there's a lot of deadlines in between it. So yes, this year it was quieter at the Board of Assessment Review, and I believe a lot of that has to do with our rapidly appreciating market. Our residential market especially is driving that forward. Um, so what that means in equalization rate terms is that when the real estate market is appreciating and increasing, especially as rapidly as it is, our equalization rate lags one year, so our equalization rate will naturally have to fall. So don't be surprised when our rate comes out that it's fallen again, because what that means is the market continues to move further away from our baseline assessments, which were established in 2004. The fact that that number is going down is not enough information to say we need a revaluation. Um, assessments are about equity. The job of the assessment is to try and give the same opportunity for each similar property to pay a similar tax bill. Beyond that, it starts to get a little complicated because we have veterans in our, in our midst, we have senior citizens, and they each get their own individual tax discounts on top of that called exemptions. But what we're trying to do is keep the equity on the assessment roll off that baseline and it's still equitable, which is why I'm not in a hurry and really worried that this revaluation is being put off yet another year. There isn't any screaming need to have one, but it's a good idea to do it because it has been so long. So wherever there are certain inequities, they're just being moved forward year after year. And we just want to shake that tree and level it out a little bit at some point. But the equity is there, neighborhood to neighborhood, building style to building style people do generally have the same equitable opportunity to pay the same tax, whatever those rates are, for county, school district, fire district, town, all of that. Thanks, Donna. There's my judgment. Thanks, Donna. Thank, yeah. Thank you. We have Steve Peace next. Steve, we're a little out of schedule, but you want to jump up? Can I call you the Honorable Steve Peace, Head of Information you'd Technology? The first. Huh? The Honorable. You'd be the first. Oh, well, then. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, as always, we start off, uh, Director Salary, Network Technician. Yeah. Thank you for the pay increases. It's greatly appreciated. My wife always loves us. Um, there is a new budget line, Employee Compensation Help Desk. Uh, as you can see, it's th uh, 35000 We're looking to add a new position to the IT department. Uh, the IT department has been under a lot of stress lately at, since COVID. Uh, COVID has uh, definitely shook up the IT department and got us going in different directions and multiple directions at the same time. Uh, lots of new technology trying to be implemented to take care of the situation that COVID caused. 
um, a lot of remote users, a lot of field work now, a lot of mobility. Um, the IT department builds out the structure for all the departments to use. Um, since COVID, you know, before our infrastructure was always kind of in each building, then the buildings are connected together, so on and so forth. Uh, since COVID, we've kind of had to stretch that beyond our physical structures, and that has now caused a lot more work for the IT department. Uh, to the point now where we have projects that we're trying to get completed that we just can't seem to always get to. And then you couple that on top of a lot of new faces in just about every single department. So there's a lot more increased calls for assistance because they're not familiar with the systems. They don't know how to use the systems. They Plus, the employees that have been here for a while, we have all these new systems we, they put, we're trying to put in place because of COVID. They don't know how to use them. So we're, we're getting inundated with help desk calls, a lot of user stuff at this point is away from trying to get the projects completed to try to make a more robust infrastructure for the town. Uh, so that's what that position is for. Um, and then uh, capital purchases, you can see there, that's a slight increase. Uh, the biggest portion of that increase, the $3,000, I think it is, yeah, uh, is due to our Microsoft Office license agreement. Uh, it expires this year. Um, they've since changed their licensing structure, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, the good thing with that license structure is we get a lot more for our license, we get you know like Teams licenses and additional applications and things in our licenses for the users, but then of course there's an additional cost for that. Uh, the next would be. Get those numbers backwards. 2022 shows a reduction from 21. Yeah, it's a reduction. Oh, it's a reduction. Yes. Yeah. Okay. He just said it backwards. Yeah, I said it backwards. Gotcha. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, director's training seminar, uh, we found a great online resource that we've been using this year, um, it, which is really nice because now uh, John Camille, my cohort in crime, him and I can now, you know, we go home and we go take classes online and watch things, all, it's all done online and it, it's actually a great and useful tool. Um, I've actually used it a lot to learn how to implement some of the technology that we've been trying to get pushed out that we can't seem to get to. Office supplies the same, smartphones the same, that's a cost for uh, two cell phones for the department. Uh, internet connection, uh, you see that's a reduction from 6,000 to zero. Um, we have two internet connections in the town. Uh, they're kind of bonded together for redundancy and failover. Um, we have things that are in the works right now where we might be able to reduce that cost and get rid of one of those circuits. Um, then as you see, computer system technical support's pretty flat. Uh, that's the support that the IT department pays for for some of our vendors, like some of our infrastructure equipment and things like that. Director's expenses, uh, website design and maintenance is like 400 bucks. That's basically for our uh, domain names, so we can keep you know the CI dollars or NYUS, WebsterNY.gov, and all the different domain names we have. Uh, and cell tower rental, uh, that is part of our infrastructure. Uh, cell tower rental, we, we rent space on two cell towers, and we're actually located on three cell towers uh, to overlay connectivity between some of our buildings for redundancy. We have a, a mix of private connections, lease connections, and then the cell towers for microwave connections to keep all of our buildings connected so everything can come back to town all at one central point so it's easier to manage and, of course, reduce cost because we don't have all this equipment being duplicated in all the buildings. We also have cell tower revenue. Yep. Yep. It doesn't show here, but elsewhere in the budget. Yeah, see the cell towers that are on the town property, they, they do generate revenue for the town. Um, so that's pretty much the IT budget, pretty short and sweet. I try to keep it simple, <laughs> or at least as simple as possible. Anyways, uh, if you have any questions, let them rip. No, thanks, Steve. I don't. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Barry? Okay. Unfortunately, uh, Councilman Abbott had a previous commitment, and, and so he could be here at the 4:30 workshop. And since he's the liaison for your department, you know, I, I gotta say, um, and I, I find myself closer to uh, Bill from a standpoint. We grew up without computers and iPhones and all that, so it's a little foreign to us in a lot of ways, intuitively, this IT. But it's here. And, you know, it's funny, over the last few years at my business, I really had to 
kind of figure out uh, from an old guy's perspective, you know, how to make sure that we had the tools in place to make our staff work efficiently. And that is carried on to, the, you know, being here at the town. And, uh, you know, when you kind of showed, Steve, uh, there's 150 people that work for the town, full-time and part-time, that are on our computer systems. Okay, so roughly, roughly 150 people, uh, soon to be eight facilities now, but yeah. more than when I first started. Uh, um, Florence, Town Hall, Highway, Parks and Rec, the sewer, now we get the Parks Barn, yeah. the library, uh, this building. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's been growing. Paul and Josh and Mary, are, who are here tonight, and the Chris Pilot was here, the different applications or software packages that we, that the staffs use, you know, mm -hmm. IPS, which is supported yep. by BASF, a lot of acronyms. Um, uh, well, Munis, the yeah. conversion we're making uh, on that, Paul, and you start to see how all of these versions are really demanding that the user have a higher degree of IT functionality yep. at their organization. Um, so a lot of this is being, you know, forced by just the way the world is. Um, you know, Mary Harrington, who, I, can I still call you our new town engineer? Or, uh, when does that drop off? After four months? After well, a year? You get it for a year? You want to as a honeymoon? Or, you know. um, but, you know, Mary has, has brought up that some of the things that she works on as an engineer and, and communications with different places, that we need, we need more sophistication uh, in, in our networks and all that stuff. So... All of those things um, have kind of led to, and I know, Steve, that you know. I think certainly the big hit this year is getting the help desk person. Yeah, that's and that one. that's big um, because you do have 150 people calling you and Jeff yeah. for a, a myriad of reasons that can range from plug in your computer to something right. serious. Sometimes it's a, a major issue where there's an outage. Other times it's you know the, the turn your power strip on and everything in between. So yeah. And, um, you know, it's funny because I think your budget from last year is increasing from 21 to 22, it's re increasing 9.4%. Wow, 9.4%. Dollars wise, it's increasing, I think, $30,000, right? Yeah. And, and it really is. And you did some great figuring out how to cut some other things to be in a position to get that help desk person. Right. Um, because a new employee at the, at the town. Uh, there's a lot of tentacles to us having a new a, an employee, a position that didn't exist here before. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, anyway, that's not a question. I just thought that I think that it should be known that you know there was a. Well, the the nice thing is even with, with the, the numbers you see here, what the IT department tries to do with all that funds is provide is to provide the technological infrastructure for all the departments. So, uh, like. If there's things that Mary wants to do, I'm, I'm not an engineer. I don't know what applications are out there. So, like, Mary would say, Steve, I need to be able to do these things. Is it possible to do? And then I would say, within our infrastructure, yes or no. We need a budget for some things to be able to build out the infrastructure to do that. Uh, we try to do that for all departments. Like, uh, even when uh, Donna was up here talking about the applications that she was working on and things like that, um, our infrastructure is built out so that she can, can do that. In fact, uh, I know she is working with somebody that does a lot of the work that she needs done remotely for an application that she's trying to get going. So that infrastructure is, the IT department tries to put that infrastructure in place the best we can so that those things can be done. And of course, for the amount of money that you allow me to spend. <laughs> yeah, right. We're good. Honorable. You're done. Thank you, Steve. Well, what is it called? Honorable, my life. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Have a good evening. Don't, don't hang on to it. All right, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to, I'm done with the honorable thing. I think you feel slighted. Well. Walking up to the podium. <laughs> Arthur Patrone who probably... We for 10 minutes early, we'd like to stay on that track. Okay, I just want to say that Thanks, Art. It, it, if you you are probably running a business within the business of the town government that has had the most 
moves and shakes the last four years. Shakes and moves. All to the good. Yeah. All to the good. All right. So we're going to uh, start. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of line items. Uh, overall, I think was pretty flat this year. There were some highs and some lows. So we'll touch on those. Jump in. Uh, if you have any questions, we'll start out with uh, professional services. It's a decrease of 60,000. Uh, that's due to uh, us hiring a chief plan operator who's working out very well. Uh, so we don't need those services there anymore. Uh, scrolling down, we're really flat through uh, employee on-call pay, overtime pay. Uh, we'll go down to uh, personnel services, 8120. Uh, that did increase uh, because we had a, uh, we're still trying to uh, sort out the budget. Uh, Ken Dickinson, we moved him from inside to outside. He is a maintenance mechanic by title of foreman, so he is now in the appropriate spot. Uh, also, we'll be hiring a laborer in preparation for retirement. Uh, that labor won't come on until uh, definitely after Q1. Uh, capital purchases, we will be purchasing. Uh, I've got a budgeted to purchase two submersible pumps uh, so we can hopefully get out of emergency uh, POs, but we have it in there. It's budgeted for it uh, in case we need it. Uh, improvements to pump stations, uh, that was actually a decrease, uh, but we will be adding an up updated level sensor to Wall Road, a new control panel at Mill Creek. Uh, we have a terrible uh, drainage problem at Hedges. Every time it rains, uh, the pump goes into high water. Uh, that is a call out. Guys have to stand there uh, until uh, the well pumps down, which sometimes could be hours. So if we can resolve that, uh, that'd be that'd be good for everybody. Uh, moving ahead. Really, the next uh, we have capital improvement for collection uh, that just increased uh, maybe five percent. Again, that's problem laterals, deteriorating uh, discharge manholes, uh, spot lighting were needed. I'm actually working with uh, Pat Stevens. I approached him. Uh, the problem laterals we normally um, sub out to a contractor. I'd like to get the highway to do those. Uh, we're going to plan ahead and hopefully they can work it into their. Uh, their workload next year and keep it in-house. All right, we should probably point out that the compensation line dropped because we've reclassified that one employee up to the collection system category. Yep, yep thank you. So, uh, Monroe County Pure Water Sewers, uh, that increased a bit. Uh, that is because of more people coming on. Uh, to their system, and then just an increase in charge. Uh, diesel fuel jumped a little bit. Uh, that is basically because fuel prices are going up. Uh, we're flat on gasoline and some others. And maintenance of pump stations, uh, that increased uh, somewhat. Uh, we're going to do more cleaning. We have a little more staff. We can do some more maintenance on those. Uh, we can, and I actually just sent you guys an email that uh, we're, you know we're we're doing a little bit more maintenance that will keep us from getting to those emergency situations. So we're replacing those parts when they're needed to be replaced, as opposed to waiting for a catastrophic catastrophic failure. Uh, scrolling down, I miss any poll. Uh, the backside line. That decreased 66%, but that's not actually true. We just reallocated those $3,000 uh, into another dioxide line. So, you know, I, I will sort of step back that uh, working with Paul and Denise, uh, we're going to be taking a closer look uh, at what we're spending at each pump station, uh, breaking out through the year so we know, uh, you know, what's going to what pump station as to all in one bucket. Yeah, we've actually created uh, separate general ledger accounts for each pump station. <clears throat> it doesn't reflect that way in the budget, but it's just going to enable us to track it in more detail. Build a nice history for each station. 
And actually, we're understand. going to do that with the uh, with the plant as well, I believe. Correct. Yeah, we're going to break out each building, ten blower, uh, headworks, and so forth, so we can at least get a little bit narrower on where we're spending the dollars. Uh, scrolling down, uh, we did have a jump, uh, a little bit of a jump in uh, heavy equipment. Uh, we are the, the equipment is getting older. Our dump truck is getting older. Uh, our flush truck is uh, in right now for a ten thousand dollar repair. Uh, so, and we're putting more miles on the vehicles. The vehicles are getting older. So, we wanted a budget for those. Uh, you know, overtime again is flat. Uh, personal services uh, dropped uh, just a couple points. Uh, we can go to chief plan operator. Uh, that is part of what we uh, moved from uh, our consulting. So again, we did hire ch chief plan operator, and uh, he was on full time. So we just that was just a, uh, a slide within the line items. Yeah, yeah. In the prior year, sixty thousand was charged to. <clears throat> professional services because it was contracted out. So the comparison is actually 130. So 132.6. Well, going down the line, 2,000 capital purchases. Uh, that is a uh, included in that is a uh, hypochlorine pump. Uh, right now we have a, a digital <coughs> one controlled uh, by SCADA. Our backup one is manual to switch that over and have it accurate. It's not. Uh, we need to have a reliable uh, backup. Uh, we're going to look at some auto lubricators for the clarifiers and a uh, washer screw conveyor uh, for our bar screens. Again, uh, building improvements is, is flat, uh, cellular drug testing. Uh, Moving down to 8130 Paul 40372. Sludge hauling. Sludge hauling. Uh, we did reduce sludge hauling quite a bit uh, in just some conversations. We looked at history and uh, we feel that's a comfortable number. And we're going to review it and keep reviewing it, but I think that's where, uh, that's where we should land. So, uh, 40374. By oxide. That's what I was talking about. That was a jump, but that was again just a slide between uh, two different line items. Uh, the actual bioxide overall did not increase. <coughs> so, uh, laundry services did jump. Uh, our previous uh, vendor, they went out of business. And uh, this is where we land now. We do have a few new employees as well. So, uh, 81340380, heating contract, uh, that increased 25%. Uh, that is just based off the contract, the town contract, is our share of it. Uh, the maintenance, uh, we did budget uh, repair and maintenance also in there. Uh, again, uh, old equipment, so we have to uh, budget some repairs throughout the year for that. Uh, lab supplies, 40390, that dropped. Uh, we've been doing fairly well uh, in the last couple years with uh, building up and replacing uh, antiquated items. Uh, in this, in this uh, line item is a, is a second sampler that our chief plan operator needs to go out and sample uh, the uh, industrial sites throughout the town, uh, a new microscope, is in there and uh, just regular supplies. Uh, we did increase uh, miscellaneous shop parts, and uh, that is for very good reason. Uh, the staff is working with antiquated stuff. Uh, last year or two at Christmas time, I go to Home Depot and uh, by uh, battery powered Milwaukee tools for them, uh, as opposed to old <laughs> corded stuff. Uh, so we're, we're slowly building up the inventory of tools they have to work with. 
as we have uh, a few more people, we're doing more stuff in-house. Uh, they need good tools to work with. So overall, it's a savings because we're not sending these items out for repair. So a uh, good investment. It's a long-term investment. Uh, pump repairs, we did uh, for 40400. Uh, that did increase again. Uh, we still have some burial pumps out there in the ground. Uh, so we're seeing, again, we're doing the maintenance on them, replacing items before they break. This is less expensive than uh, replacing whole pumps. So uh, we do have in there centrifuge maintenance for 6000 uh, Office supplies, as you see, jumped. Uh, this is a uh, this is a form of just getting organized, plain and simple. It isn't much, uh, you know, from 2,500 to 8,000. I think we'll come in under that, but plain and simple, that's what it is. So as much as the world is uh, going uh, paperless, it's not. So um, uh, 8130-40412, Paul. Yep, generator. Uh, so that is a maintenance of our new 800 kW generator at the plant. Uh, I would like that on contract for maintenance, uh, at least for the next, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. It is a very large piece of equipment, very uh, important piece of equipment. Uh, Penn Power does a great job on all of our generators throughout the town. Uh, so uh, we're going to keep them on contract to maintain that. So, uh, oils and greases went up. Uh, again, we're doing more maintenance. Clarifiers uh, require uh, more maintenance, uh, more oil changes, more greasing. Um, and uh, medical supplies, safety equipment. Uh, that, that went up. Uh, so we've taken inventory the last couple of years of what, 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 what do we have? Uh, we are lacking uh, cones. Uh, our guys are lacking uh, some, some safety clothing. Uh, so we're going to outfit them properly. Uh, I think the highway does a great job of uh, outfitting their guys, and we're going to mimic that. Uh, you can see there. You can see the highway guys on the road. They're they're visible. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna get on track with that. or anything like that, or are there any questions? Yeah, uh, the benefits are, we took a good look at them. Uh, there are actually a couple areas that we were able to reduce uh, based on history. So we kept it as uh, minimal as possible. Actually, that category went down about 40,000. <coughs> I'll go to the capital side. It's a, uh, it's a new level sensor at our Wall Road station, a new panel at Mill Creek. So uh, yeah. over the last three years, we've been, three to four years, we've been methodically going through our uh, uh, pump stations. Uh, they have uh, very antiquated controls for the pumps. Uh, some of the electronics are dangerous. Uh, so we've been trying to peck away at those, as well as uh, replacing generators, which we're not doing this year. Uh, we're going to put in two soft start drives at our Glenview pump station. Uh, when that goes over to generator, it uh, draws too much uh, voltage. 
which then triggers a call out, uh, which could be overtime, middle of the night. So we want to keep the guys home and keep that station up and running. Uh, and then we're going back to the hedges, uh, drainage and paving. And then we'll, uh, which one do you want to go to next, Paul? Uh, did you cover 20095? We did, yeah, but okay. we'll do that again. Um, again, problem laterals, uh, repairing those. We actually carry a list uh, of problem laterals throughout the town. Uh, we flush them uh, at a minimum every quarter, uh, again, working with Pat, uh, hopefully for next year, uh, repairing some of those in-house as opposed to going outside, uh, coating or replacing deteriorating uh, discharge fan holes, and then uh, spotlighting uh, areas to reduce I&I &I, uh, as we're cameraing we find areas. And we actually have the uh, debt service section. <coughs> Just, just uh, about a month ago, the town um, issued serial bonds to take the bond anticipation notes over long-term financing. So you see the uh, reduction in bond anticipation, band principal and interest, and uh, you see a slight increase to serial bond principal and interest. Uh, so it's basically a refinancing of short-term debt to take it over long term for the uh, phase two, uh, phase one project of the wastewater treatment plant, which was the uh, installation of the three clarifiers and a number of other things. And um, if you look down here, there's uh, actually some incoming money. Uh, there's $125,000 which is coming in from the debt service fund, so it's essentially a revenue. Uh, debt service money is <clears throat> money that's left over from past bond issues. Uh, it has to be used to reduce bond debt. Uh, there was about a million dollars sitting in the debt service fund, so I'm gradually bringing it over to uh, cushion the blow of the, of the debt service. And this 7356 is, a, is actually a bond premium that we received when we issued the serial bonds about a month ago. And that becomes a revenue in the following year. So, so it just nets the cost down. That's the most of it, right, Eric? I think that's the most yeah. of it. With year to year, we were flat, correct? Yeah, uh, yeah. The capital side is uh, after revenues and everything is uh, down about twenty three thousand. The O and M side, the net amount to be raised by sewer rents is actually up about uh, ninety three thousand. So I can, that's actually up here. So we're looking at O and M sewer rent of 173.82 versus 168.89 last year, and then on the capital side, the capital charge will be uh, 21.59 versus 23.23 last year. So it's a slight decrease. That's where we stand. I'll now entertain questions from the board. Well, I know you've been doing a lot of work as far as, <clears throat> you know, improvements and rather than putting band-aids on things, planning long-term. And I think we're starting to see the bear the fruits of, of all the diligent work that you and your team have done in the last two or three years. So, <clears throat> You know, John, I appreciate you saying team because it, it's those guys that, that uh, on the staff that do the work uh, in Denise. Uh, yeah, I'm just there to support them. and. You know, quite honestly, a lot of this doesn't happen uh, <laughs> without a lot of calls to Paul to get some guidance. Sure. And uh, we'll work so. closely together. Well, you provide the information that we need to make the decisions, so it's very, very important. And it's nice to hear that, you know, because of the advanced planning, that'll free people up to do, you know, some of the things that they need to do. And 
we're trying. We've originally been designated to do, yeah, so that's great. We're getting there. Um, two questions, uh, and I don't know if Paul is best to answer or Art, so I'll let you figure it out on each one. Um, the combination of our O&M and capital created for the 2021 budget, I think about $192 for our EDU charge. Correct. Mm -hmm. And EDU, for those keeping track at home, is, what is it, equivalent dwelling unit at 60,000 gallons a year. Is that correct, uh, Art? That's correct. Um, and there was a lot of talk out there that our EDU charge in 2021 was somewhat fictitious because it didn't have phase one's $12 million net of grants, $9 million uh, debt <coughs> financing there. Paul, is that true? No. I it's didn't think so. Uh, we've had bond anticipation notes for the past two years uh, to finance the uh, phase one project. Right. And when you have bond anticipation notes, you're required to pay the same principal allocation right. as you would if you had zero bonds. Right. So it's been in there. So when you just described a few minutes ago that we converted those from short-term debt to long-term debt, and I think the long-term debt wasn't that we converted wasn't all phase one. It was uh, there was other projects, the renovation of this building and town hall. Uh, correct. The number that shows in the budget is not just the uh, phase one. It's other serial right. bonds that are remaining. Sure. But and historically as a practice, too, just, you know, it's accurate accounting that was in the EDU charge. Yes. And it will be in the EDU charge in 2022 and in the future for phase one and any movement we make forward as we go into a phase two. Right. Okay. That is question one. Question two, based on this proposed budget for the sewer department, um, what would the EDU charge be to Webster Town residents in 2022? Uh, 195.41. Okay. What'd you say? 195.41. It's on the front of your. Uh... All the questions I have. Beautiful. Sir. So it's up three dollars and twenty-nine cents. Thank you. Thank you, Art, for all your hard work on the budget Thanks, as well. Art. Well, you caught us up, Art, because uh, I think Judge Tom and Judge David are in the room, and they're slotted for 5.15, and it's 5.13. Oh, this is good. Both of them are coming up there. I said when they retire, coming up. we could sell tickets. <laughs> You are up, Judge. Dave and Tom. Would you like to know anything? <laughs> the, uh, if you go to clerical assistance, we're uh, down in so much as that was planning for when we lose a part-timer, we will be going full-time. That's really an adjustment to more accurately reflect where we are this year. And, uh, and kind of an adjustment between clerical full-time and part-time personnel. Uh, if you take a look at where we are so far in the year, uh, we're down on the full-time, we're up on the part-time, and that, that adjustment will be made there. The part-time court security personnel is a new line. Uh, currently, we do not have any court security. Uh, in the past, that's been provided by the special police, and uh, we're trying to uh, determine the best way to have court security. The budgeted item there deals with uh, covering our Monday small claims, our Wednesday criminal, and our Friday criminal court dates. Um, and uh, we believe that that would cover us for the most essential times uh, to the extent of at least having one court security personnel covering us. 
The capital purchases deal with two black and white copiers. Uh, ours are getting long in the tooth. I believe that the town has already studied uh, black and white copiers and has gone over the copiers in general. I may be wrong on the black and white but that uh, they feel good about the Xerox copiers that they have, and I think there's one other company or something. And uh, it looks to us as if uh, the, the black and white Xerox copiers would be a, a great fit for us if our copiers die. Uh, last time my clerks were able, uh, actually one of Tom's and one of my clerks were able to uh, get a copier working with a screwdriver and, a, and an envelope opener and uh, maybe slashing it around uh, somewhat, but, uh, but that's only going to last a certain amount of time. The conference expense is uh, based on both our annual uh, fees for Monroe County and New York State Magistrates and Court Clerks Association, our mandatory training, and to some degree the uh, next year, I believe, the, the New York State Magistrates Conference will be at Syracuse, and this, we believe, would cover both our, or all of our training, annual, mandatory education, uh, annual meeting, judges and clerks. <coughs> Supplies seems to be fairly steady, uh, goes up a little, goes down a little, depending on how many envelopes you use. But that's a pretty steady eddy figure there. Uh, same thing with copier, uh, computer software, and maintenance. That used to be, for those who go back a little bit, it used to be more like two grand, but New York State took over the SEI courtroom program, and, and we no longer get charged for that. The uh, final piece is the uh, revenues. Uh, if we continue to do what we have done for the first six months, or actually not for the first six months, for what we know to this point, it would adjust out to about 167000 that we would receive this year. Obviously, that's substantially less than the 190 that we budgeted uh, last year, well, that we budgeted for this year, um, but, uh, but the 175 is slightly optimistic, but not crazy. Open some, to any questions. What are some of the issues that's driving that revenue down? Well, there are many, right? Well, depending on if you want to tell people you do or don't have to pay tickets, and uh, you do or don't have to show up in court, and so it's, uh, it's you know it's always been a line which is too has too many variables to accurately, in my mind, figure out where it's going to be. And, and one of the things that we're dealing with that's uh, new at the end of, what was it, the end of June with the uh, payment plans, you know, allegedly that's going to bring in more money. Um, I'll believe it when I see it, but, but that's what the uh, expectation by the state is. So, well, uh, every year it's, uh, I wish we could budget more exact on all of this, to be honest with you, but... Of, of all of the numbers, that's the one that has the largest give and take in it, I, I would tell you. Um, actually, I, I, uh, in running the numbers for how many cases we're at for the first six months of this year, um, we were, were at 2,806 for January 1 to June 30th. That's the highest it's been since 2016. Um, not by a whole lot, and, and prior to 2016, it was more than that. You've got 195 petty law, uh, uh, penal law cases, 2,527 vehicle and traffic, 44 civil, 2 environmental conservation, 29 transportation law, and a few individual debts. So uh, we should be handling somewhere close to 6,000. <clears throat> close to 6,000 cases for 2021. You know, and, and in terms of the, the revenue, just to add on to what Judge Portor was saying, we certainly don't set fines with the idea we're trying to break even here in the courthouse. Each, each case is on its own. You set, uh, you, you set a fine based on 
you know, the, 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 what the person pled to, and many times, uh, certainly, we ask the person if they're employed, you know, what's their financial situation. There's no sense setting up a high fine regardless of the, the charge if the, the person is not going to be able to, uh, to, to pay it. So uh, I think you'll find it in most courts, uh, they certainly don't come anywhere near their um, expenses in terms of the fine. We have the, uh, the advantage or the disadvantage, depending on looking at it, but we have the State Route 104 coming right through the center of town, so that certainly generates a, a lot of tickets. But the, the, the number in terms of revenues collected by fines is really fortuitous. Whatever it comes out, it, 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 it comes out. It's strictly a question of, of, of numbers, but you know, each case has to be decided on its own. And you know, certainly if they, if right now we're, on a, we're supposed to allow payment plans, and maybe in the long run that brings in more fines, but in the short term people are going to be paying in dribs and, and, and dribs and, and drabs. And I personally very much try to set the fine based on what I believe to be the person's financial situation. I try to avoid, you know, a, a, a payment situation if I can if I can uh, help it. Uh, but so the, the number is what the number is, and that's just again a, a factor of the fact that we have that highway come through the center of town it generates a lot of tickets. And of course, when you're talking about ninety-three dollars is a mandatory state surcharge right. on an inspection ticket, for example, right. or an expired registration, it makes it uh, where you where you take a look at. Well, then I, then we're talking about a fine on top of the mandatory state surcharge. Right. That's that's a heck of a whack on some of those right. tickets. Or a sixty-three dollars surcharge on equipment violation. Yeah. So, um, you know, all that has to be taken into taken into a, into account. And like I said, the judge Coratori and I started at the beginning of the year saying, we're going we're gonna to find people to, to make our expenses. It just doesn't work that way. This, it just works out the way it works out. Well, we're doing a lousy job of making expenses if we've got to have 140000 by rain by right. taxes. So yeah, ways to go. We're not, it's yeah, it's it's not what, we, what we look at or do. Right? It's really not our concern to, to make the budget by right? bringing in fines. And of course, the fines are divided up. Not all comes to the towns. So it's a it's a rate. That I've been doing this 20 years, and I've never been able to figure out the formula of how it works. But uh, some of them, when you get the, the printout from the state, some comes to the town. First of all, we send everything to the town, then the town forwards it to the state, and they send back. Some comes to, to the town, some stays with the state, some goes to the county. And I, I, so I have no idea how that all works out. To be honest. But what, what I think we know is that we get fifteen dollars per ticket for ticket processing. That that I'm surcharge. Well, I don't know where they. I don't know. I, actually, I don't know where they pull that out of. You know, I, mean, I guess I assume it comes out of the state surcharge, but I don't know why they call it the state surcharge. But except that that's where it goes to, and then if they give us fifteen dollars back, we're supposed to be happy. But uh, but so that's probably the the biggest guarantee that we have is I suppose we're getting fifteen dollars per ticket. But but like like Judge DeSalvo says. It's based on the offense. It's based on realistic ability, ability to pay, to pay. Yeah. And, and it's never based on, gee, we got to get a hundred bucks a ticket to right. pay, the, pay the bills. Yeah, varies based on the violation type. It definitely, yeah. uh, you know, you get an eleven point speed. That's not a. Uh, that's right. not going to be cheap. So. And you're finding people based on age too. You have people coming in who are elderly. They're on. Social Security, they're on a pension. You have people, kids coming in, 16, 17 years old. They're, they don't have that kind of. You see, you really, you really have to take each case on a case by case basis and, and making that, making that determination as best you can as the cases, as the cases come up. Barry, I'm good. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. You too. Terry, you snuck in and I didn't see. I'm sorry. Terry Bennett. Hi, Terry. All right. Highlights. Uh, personnel includes the 2% COLA, 
some steps for full-time staff members, and we did raise minimum wage at Paul's recommendation from 12.50 to 13.25, so that's built into the budget as well. We also added an additional janitor uh, to help us with cleaning the building. Um, automation capital is computer replacements, um, scanners, that kind of thing, any kind of equipment. Telephone is what it says, telephone. <laughs> we have a lease no our mystery copy. there. I'm sorry? No mystery there. No, no. <laughs> no cell phones, just plain old landlines. Mm -hmm. um, and then the copier lease is flat. Credit card usage, we encourage people to use credit or debit if they don't carry cash, and many people don't anymore, so we have a credit machine. Our memberships and notices are also flat, our memberships to the American Library Association. Um, and then here's uh, a problem. It's our rent is going up this year, 17000 uh, as part of our lease agreement. I think and it goes up every couple of years. Five years. There's an adjustment, yeah. And then yeah, there's few years. common area charges and school taxes are also in there. I guess that school taxes and yeah. common area charges that varies based on how much snow we get and that it kind does. of stuff. Postage, um, I left it flat. It's been going down over the years. More and more transactions are going via the internet, email. Our building services contact contracts are, you know, for HVAC, um, garbage, that kind of stuff. Uh, rental repair equipment, stuff breaks, so I have $3,000 in the line for when things need to be repaired. Um, automation, you, the board knows that we pay into the Monroe County Library System, um, and our portion of that is remain flat again for 2022, which is good news. I did bump up our library materials, our books, magazines, DVDs, music CDs up by 2%. And then we do subscribe to a variety of different databases that the public enjoys. Ancestry.com, Novelist are two of the major big ones in addition to some smaller ones. Cleaning supplies and maintenance is pretty much what it says. Um, toilet paper, Kleenex, that kind of stuff, cleaning supplies. Office supplies is pretty much what it says. I bumped that up a little bit because I bumped up the, the uh, library materials. And then our utilities for gas, electric, and water are bumped up, I don't know, but went down a little reduced. bit in the electric. Yeah, we actually decreased them a little bit based on history. It looked like yes. there's some room could, even though I'm sort of expecting electric to go up. We made some changes gas. to some of our lighting in the building, yeah. and we got some grants as a result uh, yep. but back from the state, so that might have contributed to bringing that down a little bit. Yes. And then the bond uh, matured, so we don't have that expense. That's correct. So that's a nice good, payment this year. That's good. Yep. And then employee benefits. Paul is nice enough to to let me know what to project for those portions of the budget. Yep. It's up slightly. A little bit. And revenue, I projected to go down. It's been trending down over the years, and I may be a little bit conservative. We had some debate about that, but I'd rather be conservative rather than fall short in the revenue lines. It's a good strategy. Well, I get worried about it. So yep. You can't, it's like the judges said, you can't always determine whether people no. are going to bring their stuff back on time. No. We obviously want them to, but you can't always tell. Are there questions from the board? No, no, I have none. Okay, thank you, Terry. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. That was, was quick. Thank you.
Mary, we have it listed as Josh first, but do you want to go first? Oh, well then, that's right, because of Yeah, you're right, because that one section is a hybrid. Pat, when did you come in? Ooh, we have Mary and uh, Josh. I am asleep at the wheel, Mary. I didn't see you sneaking in. Okay. Did you, did, you, did you come in there? Or? <laughs> okay. Hello. Um, so Josh and I will be presenting uh, engineering and community development kind of hand in hand. The first fund is the building maintenance fund. Um, so this is for the town hall and courthouse. Yes. Um, so we have a part-time custodian who is currently employed. He's actually retiring um, next Friday. And we kept the same amount in the budget. It doesn't really make sense for the two facilities to have a full-time custodian, um, but we do need full-time coverage. So we're uh, currently working with parks and highway and sewer to kind of come up with a town-wide facility maintenance strategy. Um, so that would go towards that effort wherever it ends up landing in town. Um, we kept the capital improvements and maintenance the same as well as the public works general improvements. Um, last year we rebid the, the cleaning services. I believe they were individual contracts in each building and we made it a townwide service which drastically reduced the cost. Um, garbage also went down in price. There's uh, quite a few utilities in this line item split between the A and B fund, telephone, internet, uh, gas, electric, and water that are matching or reflecting the trend of expense right now. And one other line, um, line item that got deleted in this was the right-of-way maintenance. There was $10,000 set aside for um, if our departments got calls about trees in the right-of-way and we contracted them out if highway was um, unable to take care of them, but highway has agreed to handle that, so we took it out of our budget. Um, so in terms of the fire marshal's office, uh, there isn't a whole lot of changes here. Uh, as you can see, the fire marshal's salary has increased due to um, union contracts and step increases. Uh, the part-time deputy fire marshal is remaining the same year over year. Um, we have kept pretty much everything the same other than the auto maintenance line. Uh, we do have two vehicles that serve this office and they are aging so we've decided to increase the auto maintenance portion of the budget uh, as well as the fuel line item. And then we're just going to go right into uh, animal control. Um, this position was a dual role for, um, it was split 50-50 with animal control and code enforcement. Um, I will cover the code enforcement aspect of it later in the budget presentation, but uh, we are separating those positions to put a greater emphasis on code enforcement. Um, so we're currently exploring a couple different options on how to configure the animal control function moving forward. Um, it may result in the addition of a couple part-time employees that are utilized um, on an as-needed or rotated basis. Um, so we are still working through uh, the final details on that, um, but overall we have reduced the budget for animal control. Um, we had been utilizing a part-time assistant that uh, has accepted a full-time position and her availability is no longer what it once was, so we've uh, decreased that particular line item. And the only other notable change in this section is we did up the auto maintenance uh, line item as the animal control vehicle is um, continuing to age and require um, more maintenance and repair. What year is that vehicle? Any idea? 
Yes, it is a 2013. 2013. So, what are um, the newer ones? It is one of the newer ones in the whole scheme of our fleet. Um, I we, just said to John, perhaps I've been here too long, I remember when it was new. Yeah. <laughs> we did uh, make a significant investment in some repairs over last summer. Uh, there was a number of issues that um, required some extensive uh, investment into the vehicle. We'll keep our fingers crossed that um, we don't have any major issues with it in the upcoming year. Um, but it is a specialized vehicle that was suited specifically for animal control. So we'll continue to try and keep it uh, in as good a shape as possible. Um, so this next um, fund historically has been called the Public Works Fund, but it encompasses both engineering and the um, community development department that we now have. So um, we are keeping our part-time employee, that's our one office admin that serves both, both um, departments, she'll be part-time. Um, we've We've kept overtime. It, it's up from last year, but it's actually, um, we've spent more than $500 on overtime this year. So we're just trying to more accurately re reflect a little bit of overtime that our employees need um, in the summer months, mostly. Um, the, there was a title change and role change for uh, Josh, and then myself is in the budget now. There's no um, commissioner of public works in the department anymore. Um, our full-time employees, that line item represents two engineering aides that have been with the town um, 19 and 33 years respectively, um, and then we're also adding an additional employee in the engineering department to assist um, the efforts of engineering, which includes the GIS function of the town. Um, keeping on top of all of the development on, in town, um, helping with the capital projects, the stormwater management that we need to um, oversee for DEC. So there's a lot going on in our department. Um, another notable change is that we do not, well, it's not a change, it's, it's consistent with last year. We don't have anything budgeted for vehicles. We did come to a town board meeting a couple months ago saying that, this, that we are in dire need of new vehicles, but we, we've put personnel as the priority this year to, um, to improve customer service and um, our efforts in our two departments. So we're trying to make do with what we have in terms of vehicles for one more year or look at other options. Um, that would be low or no cost as we move on. Um, We've been able to reduce our office supplies because now we're using state contracts where we weren't in the past, so the prices have gone down. Um, a lot of these are these next items, tel telephones, cell phones, um, computer systems that we use in the office. Uh, we have upped the vehicle repair expense from 3000 to 6000 to reflect our older fleet. Um, we have reduced two consulting uh, line items, the engineering and surveying services. That's, um, that's money that we've put aside if we need consulting services in the office. Um, and then the engineering GIS professional services, we use MRB as a consultant to help with some GIS work. But we're getting more um, in-house expertise in both of these items, so we're going to try and do more with the people that we have on staff versus um, seeking outside help. Um, and the last thing I'll note is that we have increased our revenue um, from a projected 13000 in this year to 40000 um, in next year. I think that's pretty conservative. This uh, revenue is, is from um, the fees that we collect on new development in the town. So. Um, since I've been on board, we've been looking more closely at the engineering estimates because this is a percentage tied directly to that estimate to make sure that it's reflecting present day costs. Um, so we're getting more 
back in those inspections and we're also looking to be more diligent in getting out there in the field. So, yes, John? Could you just give us an example of one of the recent um, letters of credit where the developer had X amount of dollars and yourself and another department went out there and let you tell the story to go? Um, yeah, so we have um, a, we had a developer come in and give us a, well, the engineer prepared the letter, the estimate for the project. Um, so we looked at it, and Pat helped me review the costs um, because Pat just came from the contracting world, so he had a good idea of what um, those earthwork and utility costs would be. And so it went from um, $140,000 to $340,000 as the engineer's estimate, and um, that over doubled the fee that was brought into our office. So. Um, we're looking at making sure that that's more representative of the present day costs for construction so that if there is something that isn't put in correctly or needs to be remedi remediated by the town, we have the money on hand to go and correct it so that our residents don't suffer the consequences of poor construction. Right. We've also captured a lot of revenue that was missed in previous years also. So, you know, kudos for that. That's right. It's a significant amount of money. It's a significant amount of money. And um, the additional personnel along with yourself and Josh um, will keep that going in the proper trend. And, you know, those fees and letters of credits from fees will not be missed going forward. Do right. We? Yeah. Okay, moving on to the building department. Um, the first line temporary help. We've eliminated altogether. That's traditionally been when we've called upon our partners at the village to fill in during uh, periods of staff vacations or when we're experiencing an <coughs> influx of permit applications. Uh, we feel that that will no longer be needed, partially because we are adding an assistant building inspector position. Um, so that is a new position as of this year. It is a position that the town did have back in the uh, mid-2000s um, during the uh, economic crisis that occurred in 2008 when the uh, building inspector retired and the assistant was promoted up. Uh, they chose not to backfill at that time. Um, clearly, uh, with all of the development and building going on around town, I feel uh, that it's warranted to have an assistant building inspector that primarily um, is out in the field conducting the inspections and also provides coverage for um, sick days and vacation as well as the increase in permit applications that we've been experiencing um, partially as a result of COVID, um, people getting stimulus money, deciding to invest in improvements in their homes, uh, we have seen a huge influx in the building department in terms of new applications. So we have added that assistant building inspector position. Um, we did have a staff member, that is an existing staff member, that was essentially filling that role um, along with their primary duties. And um, we are now bringing on someone that will be dedicated to the building function and the existing employee will be focusing on their primary job duties moving forward. Another note I'll, chain, uh, I'll mention is that um, we do have a new building inspector. Uh, our longtime building inspector, Rod Potter, retired last Friday, um, and uh, Nick Mooney has been promoted to that position. Uh, so there is a savings there uh, in terms of where the steps are. Um, another notable change going back to code enforcement, as I mentioned earlier, uh, that position was previously split between animal control and code enforcement. Um, we are adding a dedicated code enforcement officer to focus more on enforcement of the property maintenance code, as well as uh, this individual will be tasked with helping to develop a, a vacant uh, property strategy and registry for the town, um, really with the intent of ensuring that vacant and zombie properties 
are um, kept up and that they're not detracting from uh, other neighbors' property values. So um, the assistant building inspector and the new code enforcement officer is anticipated to start on Monday, August 16th, both of them. Um, I, I know that our office is very excited and looking forward uh, for some additional support. Um, everything else pretty much remains uh, the same. We, we reduced some office supplies. Um, in terms of dues and conferences, I'm not quite sure how that got down to zero, but we are going to be needing some funds for uh, the building inspectors to continue their continuing education credits that are necessary every year. Um, so we may have to make a slight adjustment there. Um, but we've we've reduced vehicle maintenance for the building department because uh, the vehicles that they have assigned to them are are relatively n newer compared to some of our other vehicles. So we slightly reduced um, that expense uh, as well as fuel expense. Are there any questions on on that specific uh, section? Kept the uh, building permit revenue flat year to year, 120,000. I think that's about right. So. Yeah. Yeah. And if anything, we we may exceed it. Um, yeah. Depending on how the rest of the year pans out. Um, so if there are no other questions, I guess I'll just continue on to the next section. These are for the planning and zoning boards. Uh, pretty much compensation to the board members uh, just reflect the that they remain the same actually um, the only change in both of these sections is uh, the recording secretary salary has increased uh, per the union contract with the two percent cost of living adjustments her salary is split between uh, zoning and planning board so the recording secretary really is the only section that has changed in, in both of these respective categories. Yep, they're fairly, fairly flat year to year in both those categories. Um, Benefits uh, right up yeah. slightly, about seventeen thousand uh, year to year. <clears throat> um, we we think that's about right. Uh, taking into account the new employees, um, took a look at the history. Historically, we've been running quite a bit less of budget, so there's some room in that line. So hospitalization, medical insurance isn't up quite as much as you would expect, but that's because there was some room in there from the prior year, so I think we've got it all right. And the revenue categories, we have uh, the biggest revenue that funds this department, or this B fund, is sales tax. Uh, we have it at 774000 for 2022, up slightly for over the previous year. The balance, there's a transfer that comes in from the sewer fund for about 40000 And when you net the, all the revenues and the transfers, and we appropriate some fund balance, 201000 net down to about 95000 And then the amount that has to be raised by taxes. It was zero last year. We actually covered it all with sales tax, but not quite this year. Well, I would say given the changes in the departments, the two departments, that's a very, very conservative, very, very good number. I mean, they worked very hard to get to that number. Yes, they did. Very hard. We've had a number of meetings. Yes. And we appreciate it. And so, I, I still think so overall the revenues are conservative, yeah. so even though we're appropriating 201000 in fund balance, we may not quite use that much. 
Yeah, I think the revenues are very conservative. We'll see point. how it goes. So I have, it, uh, it's not really a question, but a request, because I know that um, not everybody may be aware of some of the changes in your department, especially this past summer with the, with the interns uh, that we utilized. So um, would you just give a brief explanation of, of what our interns did to, to catch up the department and, uh, you know, just what their duties were? Yes, so we have um, four interns currently working at the town. Um, one of them was strictly dedicated to doing upgrades to our GIS system. Um, so she is updating the symbology. She's adding more information. We want to get to a point where we have all of the sewer data in there so it'll show direction of flow. Um, we're adding more district information in there, such as drainage districts, water districts, um, things of that nature. So there's a lot of um, tools that can be added to the GIS system to make our lives easier and um, helping the residents simpler and quicker. Um, we have three other interns and um, they've been doing some field data collection um, with GIS units and they've also, a lot of their work this summer has been um, getting us caught up on our MS4 regulations. Um, so we have about 20 construction sites in town right now that have um, general permits out for their stormwater. And um, about two-thirds of the town is in an impaired watershed, which requires two inspections a week if you're in that area of town. So um, I'm getting, I don't know the exact number, but probably... 30 plus SWIP inspections every single week. Um, they're probably four to five pages in length and they take a little bit of time to review. So <clears throat> the interns are reviewing all of them. Um, they have spreadsheets going for each site and they're um, flagging things that are problematic so that I can follow up with the developers and make sure that they're remediating things. Um, they're also doing SWIP inspections on behalf of the town, so they are um, completing inspection reports on the sites. Um, and these are all things that make Webster look really good to the DEC and the uh, Munner County Stormwater Coalition when we file our annual report at the um, end of each year. I believe that goes from um, March to March, um, and then we file it in June. So um, they've just been kind of my eyes and ears on the construction town and keeping up with paperwork. They've done a couple other um, projects for us. They've helped highway file complaints over the last five years, so they're filed with the clerk's office and we have a record of them. Um, they've also gone and drove around town and inventoried all of the signs to our subdivisions and things that might be in the right-of-way or on parkland property or if they're on private property to help us um, understand what maintenance we need to be doing. So they've been kept really busy in both the office and the field, and they've been needing minimal oversight. So I've really appreciated all the work they've done and um, how they've been very productive without needing too much of our attention because we're very busy right now. Thanks for that explanation, Mary. I appreciate it. No, I, th I think that was a really great way to get caught up on quite a bit of work that needed to be done and utilize interns to do it without hiring additional people on for those projects. Yeah, and a lot of them, um, three of them are either in school still or fresh out of school. So I think it's a great experience for them sure. to just right. be in this. Sometimes Josh looks at me and is like, is that really a task they should be doing? But I'm like, you know, they haven't done any of this. This is great exposure. Uh, we have a geography major who's doing SWIP inspections, was trained to do SWIP inspections. So kind of engineering style duties, but he's learning a lot and enjoying it. Um, they've written meeting minutes for us at staff meetings, so just whatever we need help with, they've been there, so. Yeah, good, good group been a, of young kids. It's been a win-win for both. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it's a question as much as it is if you can explain again uh, in our department head meeting uh, a few weeks ago, um, Mary, I think it was you who described uh, how Two departments at the town teamed up, and Pat's here tonight, so, um, and how taking the engineer's estimates on uh, new developments and converting those to the fee schedule that we have at the town, um, what you guys are doing in that example you gave of how that's going to increase the revenue. 
Right, so um, it's, the engineer's estimates are broken down into different line items. So it's moving earth, it's um, putting in linear footage of uh, certain diameter pipes, and all these things have um, you know, a construction cost to them that is hard to put your finger on if you're not in that field and um, working with contractors. So Pat's been um, really great working with myself and Tom Corbett in reviewing these uh, cost estimates just to make sure that they reflect current day pricing. Um, and it's, it's helped get the right revenue into our department, so. Well, you're being humble because the example you gave is that the engineers for a developer uh, submitted an, an initial engineer's estimate for all of that, the, the grading and the uh, sewer pipes and, and the uh, sanit sanitary and the storm and I guess the, the roads and all that. And it was like about $100,000 that they'd have to post a letter of credit on. And based on our current fee structure, that would bring about $3,500 of <coughs> revenue to the town. And you guys looked at that engineer's estimate, and Pat, because you have been in engineering, but you've also been in construction, uh, you looked at it and then said, that's an unrealistic. They're giving prices to that stuff that's unrealistic. And at the end of the day, you said, when you finished, uh, if you want to call it a negotiation, with the developer and the engineer, you settled on 340000 was the posted letter of credit. And that creates $10,000 of revenue to the town. Yes. That's significantly I, more than 3500 It is. It was a, a very big increase. Um, but I will say that when Pat looked at it, he was definitely pricing it per the price that it would take for, um, like, the town or that kind of, like, a private entity to be doing it. Um, if we were looking at this as a prevailing wage job, as if the oh town goodness. themselves had to sub out this work to get it done, it would be even higher. So right. we're not looking to increase it unreasonably, but we're looking for it to be accurate um, for what the work is. So. Absolutely, and I hope nobody, I mean, fair is fair, right is right. What I think that that story shows, and it's something that we really have, uh, uh, it's been nice to see that we've, we've had turnover of department heads, we have new department heads, they really are communicating well with each other and playing on each other's strengths and leaning on each other, and they're, that, that it helps the town uh, in situations like that, like that. And that additional revenue, theoretically every dollar of revenue that we can get fair and equitable revenue, is theoretically one last dollar we need to tax our citizens. Correct. And it so. also helps with, um, you know, the more aware that Pat is of what's going on, then the easier it is to spot inconsistencies in the field as um, he's going around town and, and doing his job. So anything that we can get to match the plans during construction is less dollars out of his budget down the road when things um, aren't put in correctly and grading issues and stormwater ponding happens that it shouldn't be. So um, it is all around a win-win for the town. Yeah, absolutely, and I know that you've addressed a, a number of developments, um, some of the deficiencies that were out there. So once you put eyes on it and the developer knows that you have eyes on it, they know that they have to, you know, stay on plan. Right, yep, we're working on um, getting our expectations realized and, right. and withheld. So That's a significant improvement. You guys are doing a great job, and Pat, thanks for all your input, too. And certainly, I mean, I think your department, um, which it is the Department of Public Works, albeit over the last year plus there's been some movement in it that it's been split into a community de development department, which you're running, Josh, and an engineering side, which obviously, Mary, you're running. Um, there, we could go on for hours about the improvements that you have done uh, in that department that benefits, uh, really de benefits the citizens and the taxpayers, it benefits the developers, it benefits the engineers for the developers, it benefits everybody. Um, it's been very impressive. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you both. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, we're ahead of schedule, aren't we? Pat, it's a good thing.
thing you showed up on early, eh? Yeah? Run, run ahead. Pat Stevens, our new highway chauffeur. Pat, how are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Good. Today? In case people don't know him. Yeah. Sure. Um, Pat, can I tell you something? Uh, sure. You, you are. Uh, thank you, Paul. He is our new highway superintendent. Uh, are you about three to three and a half months in? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Correct. Um, Mary's new town engineer, relatively three and a half months in, but Josh, you've been here for a year and a half. You're a veteran, right? Um, I guess where I'm getting at is that you have a very big budget in your department. It's a lot of money, it's a lot of staff, and you've been here three months. Let, let's, I mean, that's a tough position to be put in all of a sudden up on the podium for a, a, a budget that size, huh, Barry? You. What was your first? I mean, did anybody, uh, was, uh, was it uh, Jones? Yeah. <coughs> Yes, he did help me with it in preparation. I yeah. we worked together for a couple of years before I was. And I'm sure you're helping Joe Hurst. Yep. Yeah. So, all right, I'm just, he'll do fine, Ben. <laughs> what, that's what I signed up for. And so, yeah. you know, uh, it's not a surprise. Uh, it's what I was looking to take on coming in here. And uh, everybody down there has been fantastic, as well as some of the board okay. members here about working through this with me, Paul, everybody. So, um, not trying to shake things up. Too much. A few areas that uh, started to have some of my own thoughts on, even in the three months, and uh, a lot of areas that I'm still getting up to speed on. But hopefully, uh, we've got something here that'll work out and benefit the taxpayers and allow the department to continue to do what we've been doing for a very, long, very long time, which is uh, provide a very high level of service to every single resident here in the town. So that's the goal. But yeah, three months. That's, we'll see. <laughs> Put it together okay. So, uh, starting right off, we've got the uh, general fund townwide. Uh, this is mostly the highway administration portion. Um, most everything here is uh, very similar to years in the past. Uh, in some cases, some slight decreases based on salary changes and personnel change, which I mentioned has switched around quite a bit. Um, one of the items in here that went up pretty significantly, at least percentage wise, uh, the security system monitoring. Uh, the current security system needs a major update next year. We've been told by the security management company roughly $13,000. That's what that increase is there in the security system monitoring line. Um, it is not optional, is what we've been told. Um, the building down there is getting up in age, so we're working on uh, minimizing any large expenditures going into it. This was not one that we could mitigate in any way, um, so that line went up pretty significantly. Uh, the cleaning service has gone down. That's a part of the townwide consolidated uh, cleaning service plan that Mary mentioned earlier. Everybody's um, had a reduction in that by collaborating. Um, the rest of those are pretty much on par except for the utilities. And I heard this mentioned in other departments that historically those numbers uh, haven't been realized. So yeah, we, his, we historically the budget's been much higher than the actual, so we were, even though we were thinking uh, energy costs are probably going to rise, there was enough room in there to actually bring them down a bit. Correct, so that's what those are. Nothing else uh, too significant in that section. Uh, the next section. Street lighting? Is street lighting. Uh, didn't make many changes there. Um, there were some improvements done, which we mostly facilitate through Monroe County, different areas like that. Previously, I don't think there'll be quite as much next year, so there's a slight uh, reduction in that section. Uh, drainage off-road, uh, slight change, uh, so common waterways that flow between uh, the two portions of town here, watershed related, um, keeping them those open, uh, pretty much the same, no major changes there. Uh, the next section, highway fund townwide. This is the equipment section. So we get down there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So equipment section. Uh, this is obviously probably the largest section. Um, a few things that were started prior to me getting here. Um, 
in this section that I've tried to continue, and uh, I'll spend a little bit of time in this section just to explain some of the concepts of, of what we're trying to do with this, because obviously um, the critical line in there, uh, obviously the people we have running it and all that type of thing is going to be very similar, a similar number of hours in a year, but the purchases of equipment uh, line, that's an increase of uh, almost $116,000 that we're proposing in that particular line. Um, that number is quite larger than, historically speaking, um, what we're trying to do with that number, um, there's a lot of older equipment, and as the equipment gets older on the scale that we have it for the services we provide, the maintenance cost rises, uh, rises significantly because of the size of what we have. So the number we're trying to affect by investing more money in these lines and getting things up to date, uh, there's, there's two main points, but the main number we're trying to affect is a little bit lower. The equipment repair and maintenance cost, uh, $420,000 a year in uh, maintenance cost. We're trying to drive that down um, because those expenditures are at an all-time high. Your, your maintenance uh, technicians, if we have to send the large trucks out to a facilitator like BMAC or somebody like that, those technicians are now $150 an hour. Uh, not too long ago, they were less than $100. Um, all of your parts and components on the newer trucks with uh, new environmental things are more expensive. Uh, the, the maintenance dollars um, are at an all-time high. So those expenditures in those areas aren't yielding as much as we would like. We do a tremendous amount in-house to try to buffer that. We have some very skilled uh, people down there where we don't have to send things out, which we can control the cost of. But when we do, um, it, it, it gets it's going to continue to get expensive. So if you have a fleet that is also needing more maintenance combined with the cost, for that maintenance, uh, this number is going to increase drastically as time goes on. So by having newer equipment, um, we should be able to reduce that, reduce the amount of times it goes out. Uh, it should be more routine, basic maintenance that we can handle in-house and really flatten uh, those expenses instead of having that number continue to creep up over time. Um, the other aspect to this line uh, being as high as it is and, and increasing even slightly this year um, is the resale of equipment. So the newer the equipment that we might be able to replace or trade or get on a change out cycle <coughs> is the higher the revenue is. So that's a line a little bit farther down. Um, so I think the number I have in there for what we're switching out this year and most of the pieces that we are um, talking about, and I can go through those, but they are uh, uh, a pickup truck, uh, a large sweeper. The sweeper runs constantly, a huge amount of wear on that item. Um, a uh, replacing one of the dump, dump trucks, one of the main plow trucks. We have 16 of those uh, currently functioning. Eight, 18 routes with 16 trucks, but we have several spares which uh, pitch in more and more. Um, and then a low boy tractor that is uh, you know over 10 years old and an excavator. The excavator is one of the pieces that's going to contribute to this. We're at a middle range hour on that thing. Um, which is a little bit ahead of a major, uh, what we've seen historically to be a major maintenance cost on that item, uh, but it has a higher value right now. So by switching that piece out now, the delta between the cost to replace the piece and the, what we're getting for it gets smaller. So so that's the, the concept here. You, you'll see last year there was an $809,000 expenditure on equipment, but only a $20,000 uh, sale of equipment line. Uh, this year, that's significantly different, and I, I still feel pretty confident that um, that revenue line, the sale of equipment line, is conservative in, in what we have uh, to achieve. Um, so this example basically shows that this year we're getting rid of some pieces that are more valuable, so it uh, decreases that delta. So if you, if you look at it, what's actually happening here, if you look at the difference between the equipment expense line, purchases of equipment, and the uh, sale of equipment lines from last year uh, to this year, uh, that increase of 115000 is actually, once you factor in the revenue generated by the pieces we're selling, only $25,000, uh, $26,000, uh, because the revenue went up. 
So we want to drive that trend. That, that is the idea here, is to get in a position where the resale, which is right now at an all-time high also on some of these pieces, is able to offset the overall expenditure to a point, and then we'll be able to, all of these numbers will be able to come down drastically, including the maintenance. So we'll maintain a lower level of maintenance, um, and then be, by keeping newer equipment, and then eventually that newer equipment cost will start to minimize as the resale remains high against the pieces that we're rotating through. Um, and obviously, uh, the other part of the maintenance is uh, when you're having more larger maintenance uh, items that are needed, they often happen when the vehicles are under heavy use. Um, so having a truck go down during the middle of a snowstorm uh, hurts our ability to provide the service that we do, which is why we have so many spares currently to really avoid that. Um, but as more maintenance is needed, there's more chance of that happening, which is uh, probably the most critical component that we, what we want to avoid. Um, so that's that line, which is one of the more significant increase sections, but again, um, the revenue is also drastically different. Um, I have hopes of potentially making this less than last year net between the revenue and not, but uh, there is some variation in the market on that that I, I don't want to commit to right now, so I'm trying to be conservative. Yeah, I think, we, yeah, we stay conservative on that sale equipment line. Yeah. We actually think it could be quite a bit, quite a bit higher. Yeah, but and, and as I said, if don't it... Don't take a chance. So. Yeah, even if it's only $26,000 higher, then we're net yeah. or flat from yep. last year to this year. Good chance um, of that. And there's, I think, a very good chance of that. So that's, that's the piece on the equipment line, which is obviously one of the bigger... Uh, pieces we have uh, to what we do, which is, you know, clear the roads, number one, first and foremost. So that's that line. Um, through the rest of that section, everything remains pretty flat, not a lot of change. Um, I did want to touch quickly on the hazardous waste section. We actually uh, used most of that this year. Uh, we had an oil grease separator that, that failed and been in there for several, several years. So. Uh, we don't come across hazardous waste very often, but you don't always think of some of these basic functioning systems. Essentially, that's what it is. It's taking an oil, grease, grit from the drains in the garage, and it separates them before uh, everything goes out of the system. If that's not working, you're sending contaminants places that they, they shouldn't be going and uh, cause an issue. So this year, we actually did utilize that, which we typically wouldn't come in contact with too much hazardous waste, but it fell into that realm because it's a, a fuel, petroleum-based situation. Um, okay, so moving along, so down to these revenue items, uh, most of them stayed pretty much the same. We're seeing relatively, historically, the same amount of effort uh, that we're able to provide to the county, to the state, um, for mostly snow removal, a few other projects. Um, the state aid has been pretty consistent, the uh, chips line throughout, so we left those the same. Uh, the only one that increases the equipment sale, which I covered a minute ago, uh, what, what that's driven by. It's just the pieces that we're, we're working on switching out and getting up to speed this year. Uh, not much on the next section, Paul. I don't know if you, uh, it looks like yeah, it's mostly a, been yours. I can explain. There's a transfer from the part town fund. Right, <clears> up in that section. Since the town wide fund owns the equipment and the part town fund can't do their job without the equipment, there's a legitimate uh, transfer between the two funds to compensate the town-wide fund for the use of the equipment in the part town fund. Correct. There's a it's probably confusing the most. But it makes complete sense to me. <laughs> and it, that helps us finance the equipment to purchase the equipment that we need correct. to do so the work in the part town fund. Right. So the, the equipment benefits everything, but there's... Yes. funds in one fund versus the other, so we're balancing that out yes. in order to drive toward the concept that I Correct. just explained. That, that's uh, So we appreciate that uh, yeah. configuration and that it we're works. able to do that. It, it does work, and I think it's going to bring us to a, a good place, a very good place hopefully in the near future here with being able to uh, realize some savings from those, yeah. those investments for sure. So uh, There is some uh, debt service this year. Uh, once again, this relates to the uh, bond anticipation notes, the short-term borrowings that we just refinanced in the serial bonds. <clears throat> As part of that bond issue, there was some purchase of highway equipment, and that's being 
going to be paid over the next uh, five or six years, and about fifty-six thousand a year. Okay. Very good. Yep. Uh, employee benefits. These are in your. Yeah, that's uh, up slightly year to year. Took a good look at the actual history, factored in any uh, employee. Compensation increases, new employees, things like that, and uh, try to bring it in line. So I think it, this is a pretty good number for the year. And year to year, the amount to be raised by taxes is actually down about sixteen thousand. So, go to the Part Town Fund. Yeah, yeah, Part Town. Uh, so the first section there um, on general road repairs. There's compensation. Uh, fuel, things of that uh, nature, the compensation to employees being uh, slightly, or it's up, um, reflects. COLA step increases, um, also requires us to get uh, enough staff up to speed, which we're working on now. Uh, we did have several retirements last year, but uh, we're anticipating certainly now more than ever needing that staff in order to complete the services, so that'll be rectified hopefully here shortly. Uh, fuel, we increased slightly just based on current trends, where we think it's headed. Uh, it's a hard one to predict. As we said, if we could, we'd probably be in a different line of work. But um, So that one increased slightly. Everything else generally the same in that section. Uh, permanent road improvements. Uh, so these are our, our capital projects. Uh, we do utilize some state aid funding in these areas, uh, but we've seen... Um, so the first line uh, down slightly in the compensation section, uh, that's, that's based on where, where we're seeing the labor used uh, across the year, uh, capital improvements projects, uh, because of a few factors um, are starting to be scaled slight, back slightly in time. So what that may, essentially means is the material costs are going up. So uh, the amount of material you're able to get for these projects, it takes a certain amount of time to put it down. If the material is higher, you're able to put down the amount of material you can afford within the budget faster. So this compensation labor hours section uh, has gone down slightly, even though the overall um, has not. The biggest change in this one is the uh, the CHIPS funding line, uh, how that is going to function. Uh, that is a reimbursable funding that uh, is spent on uh, different road improvements, but essentially it can be applied toward anything. So in this particular instance, uh, we have reduced the amount of that funding that we're going to utilize for capital improvements. We use it in other places to pay for uh, other type of work that the, the town will be doing instead of this capital improvement line. So um, we didn't carry the expense in here because it's not where it's going to occur, essentially. Uh, that was the biggest change there. Uh, materials in some of the sections, we're currently working on High Tower and South Huckleberry. So Capital improvements we do are what we'll call a full road reconstruction. So they begin with all the utilities, pipes, catch basin work that are under the street that might be aging or need replacement. That's done. Uh, then eventually the gutter is completely replaced. Any concrete gutter that may be on these roads is removed and replaced. And then once that is complete, uh, the road surface is milled with a large milling machine taken down. Uh, between an inch and three inches, uh, reprofiled to match the gutter as needed. Uh, and then the street is repaved with a uh, flexible top paving product that uh, historically has worked well. So you end up with uh, all the infrastructure being upgraded, uh, new gutters and new road surface complete in these areas. Um, currently working on High Tower and South Huckleberry. Uh, the next target streets after that are, are Shadowwood uh, subdivision area uh, where we're seeing streets that need that kind of repair. So that's what we're working on there. Other services um, stayed the same, essentially. Um, a little bit of adjustment based on historical, uh, what we were seeing in the past three to five years for actual expenditures, slight reduction in uh, wages for painting and animal pickup. Uh, fall leaf pickup section, uh, wages went up slightly. So this is a highly labor intensive um, activity that we perform um, with quite a lot of overtime compared to other efforts uh, to get around everybody's 
home and do the leaf pickup as efficiently as we can is a, is a big push. Uh, so I have heard so far, I'll experience it for the first time this fall, but I uh, have seen everybody out working in years past before, and it, it sounds like on the other end it is just as hard as it looks. <laughs> so these guys are out there a lot of hours doing a lot of stuff, so there's a slight uptick in the, in the labor aspect of that large effort that we'll be performing uh, this fall as we have in the past. Uh, snow removal, um, so again the labor went down there, slightly expected labor expenditure, uh, it has to do with where we're at in hiring and replacement of retirement type people, uh, we don't think that'll be quite as high, but everything else generally stayed the same in that section except for fuel, again we increased that based on possible projection of next year to have a buffer if things do continue to increase, um, fuel is always a major component to any of these services for us with the fleet that we have. Um, services for other governments um, were the weeds and brush hasn't been as intensive in the last few years so we adjusted that number uh, down. Uh, the county road work we're leaving this number and slightly increasing it so that we have the the opportunity within that line, it's a, it's a highly variable item that has, uh, over the past several years, changed a great deal from what I can tell. Uh, some years there's a great deal of it that we can take advantage of, other years there's not. Uh, keeping this line in here would allow us to do that much work. Uh, you'll see in another section that I uh, have not accounted for the same amount of revenue. That's to be conservative. Um, this line will allow us to do up to this much, have the funds. It's also a reimbursable situation. So we have to pay up front and then we're reimbursed by the county. Uh, this will allow us to have the ability to go up to that point, uh, but to be overly conservative, we haven't uh, carried that same amount of revenue through mm -hmm. on the revenue side. So that if it doesn't come through, we're not um, right. the wrong way in the situation. Uh, employee benefits for this section, very similar to the other section. Yeah, Paul, you took it down a little bit based on history. Uh, these are the revenue lines we mentioned. Obviously, the first one is uh, sales the, tax. Yep. Uh, actually, <clears throat> we did budget a little more aggressively on this one, plus changed the allocation a little bit between the B fund and the DB fund. Uh, so it is up year to year, but we still think it's conservative enough based on history. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, the, the revenue lines I, I touched on, uh, the snow removal and items like that, we've kept the same. They, they seem to be functioning as they should year to year uh, based on the data we have. I did re uh, decrease the uh, Monroe County other governments line slightly to be conservative, like I, as I just mentioned, with the expenditure line. Um, and that's the end of the Highway Park Town with uh, the overall there. Decreased. Well, yeah. Overall, the net amount to be raised by taxes is down about fifty-five thousand. Uh, we are appropriating some fund balance, six hundred thousand, which is less than what we appropriated last year. Uh, <clears throat> if revenues actually are conservative and we have a little savings on the expense side, the appropriation shouldn't be quite that much. So we're going to give it a go. See how it looks for, for the year. Correct. Uh, so then we're into the uh, drainage. special drainage district, uh, which currently has uh, yeah, 11,687 units, which are homes uh, within it. Um, this is an area um, DPW, Mary and Josh checked on or uh, touched on it slightly. So this is for for all the drainage that we have easement over or is owned on town land. It's it's the maintenance for it. Uh, with the amount of development over the past several years, uh, the amount of ponds uh, approaching 200 individual stormwater ponds, um, the amount of infrastructure I'll call it, whether it's swales, drainage conveyances, pipes. Uh, stormwater facilities, ponds with outlets, all of that type of thing that we um, taken over in the past several years. This section has become more and more difficult to stay ahead of. 
Uh, we're seeing a lot of maintenance, uh, the maintenance need in that area increase. Um, at least a, a noticeable portion of it sometimes we're finding uh, may not have been uh, exactly as intended on the plans to begin with. So the, the part that she touched on about having additional staff and, and trying to review these sites more, some of the work the interns did in reviewing these areas, um, but more specifically during construction time, uh, doing more checks, having more of a presence in these areas to uh, ensure conformity to the approved plans that the planning board does uh, will drive down at least a, a fair portion of what I'm seeing so far that we're actually out fixing at right. times, whether it's swales that aren't quite deep enough, you know, a, a swale that isn't as uh, defined as it should be, doesn't have as long a period of time before it fills in with be it grass clippings, brush, any any item like that that is a maintenance item, it, it will fail sooner if it lacks capacity. Uh, we see that in, in a lot of cases. Um, improper slopes in certain areas, they cause erosion issues. Uh, people actually start to lose property if, if the slopes aren't constructed correctly. So we've seen enough of those so far to know that it's an area we can attack and uh, drive down the uh, cost to uh, the taxpayer on that maintenance item. So that's the, the main focus there um, and the reason for some of these minor increases on uh, a few of these items is we are spending more time labor expenses on them um, and seeing that um, some of the cases we're having to address are more severe versus a traditional maintenance sense which is preventative. Uh, we're we're kind of losing the battle a little bit there in uh, having to take care of actual problems instead of preventing them through a maintenance project, so we're, we're trying to improve that situation uh, in a few different ways, which includes a lot of coordination with Mary and Josh at the DPW. They've been great so far. This falls into my court. Our guys go out and deal with it, but uh, we've been working uh, well together to try to come up with some plans on how to decrease the effort needed long term uh, on some of these items. Um, but overall, uh, that one has a few different aspects to the new construction of homes, uh, but kept the majority of it very close, but it does result in a, looks like, uh, increase slightly overall, mm -hmm. um, which comes with the new homes, uh, and yep. just from what I said, is very, very justified. Uh, the quantity of infrastructure we're taking over per home, uh, we're going to continue to evaluate it, but right now it seems like it may be slightly larger than anticipated in some of these uh, fees. So. I think that's yeah. So year to year, the taxes are up uh, about <clears throat> let me see, 20, uh, thirty-six thousand. Uh, I think the looks like the drainage rate will be about forty-two dollars per household. It worked. Yeah, it worked. Any questions? <clears throat> Just a comment. Okay. In three months, you really. Grass <laughs> this entire thing extremely well. Extremely well. Glad to hear it. Thank you. You really have. So he gets to stay for another three months? Yeah, you get three more months. Give me another another couple. I, I just want to comment that, you know, see, that wasn't so bad, was it, Pat? No, it's fine. Good. I told did, you I signed up for it, job. so even if it was, it's still need here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just. Good I, work. I really appreciate the fact that. Um, these three people in this room work so very well together in conjunction with our these department heads. It's it's truly something to see. And, it's a um, of fresh air. Yeah, it's great. And the town is is the benefit beneficiary is, is 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 our residents for sure. That's the goal, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I I agree. It's been great working with everyone so far, including you guys. Towards so. ahead. Thanks, Pat. Yeah. Thanks, Pat. Right on time. Thank you, Pat. <clears throat> So Paul, I mean, I don't. We're right at six twenty-nine. So I, you know, we'll, that? I got to ask you this. All right, I think I know well, the answer. Here we go. It, right? No, I'm just saying. We seven just, o'clock, we, we right? Just, seven o'clock. We'll we come meeting. back. We're gonna we're gonna go off the air in, in thirty seconds. I just want okay. Paul to answer. I think there's a simple question. We just in the last two weeks watched had all fourteen department heads present their proposed budgets. Correct. Right. Now, these weren't their original budgets. This was after a lot of work, a lot of meeting with liaisons for the departments, which are town board members, with the director of finance, with myself. With There's been a lot of work 
the last month plus to get to these presentations. The aggregate of these presentations right now has us, if this was our preliminary budget that we go to adopt in early September, are we under the 2% cap? Yes, yeah, we're under the cap. <clears throat> There's a lot of work, but we got there. Speaking of work, there's, you know, and in, in, in we acknowledge all the work that, um, that our departments had has to putting this budget together. But there's there's a couple people that, that are in every single meeting and one gentleman doing yeoman's work behind the scenes to help bring this budget in. Um, and, and that's and that's our director of finance, yeah. Paul. Yeah. And I just want to, you know, give the recognition also to where it needs to be because, you know, Paul Paul's the one that, um, that, that keeps us in line and, and helps us take a look at those lines that, you know, hey, can we look at this line and maybe bring this down? But that's our guiding light is obviously our supervisor, but, you know, the, the, the devil's in the detail, and, and, and Paul has been instrumental. In that, and I just wanted to recognize that. Thanks, John. Yeah, sure. Appreciate it. Because you know, like Pat, that's a that's a seven to eight million dollar business. If you want to make the analogy, so if you're walking in as the CEO of a seven to eight million dollar business three months ago, just in the discovery of figuring out how all it works, it's tough to grasp all the action reactions of that. I don't think it's been tough for him to grasp at all. Well, <laughs> actually, because of his background in engineering yep. and, 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 and construction, but but a lot of this stuff, and this is where Paul and I have talked, you know, it's almost unfair to these department heads who are running their own businesses, if you want to call it, that there's financial aspects to this that, you know, that fall more into our backgrounds, Paul. So, you know, the, where we can help the department heads, you know, uh, we try to do that. And I know I don't tell Mary about engineering because I don't know anything about it. But if I can help you on the accounting and budget stuff, at least I bring something to the table, Paul. You know, so, good team effort. I say this. Good team. Well, I think that concludes... Uh, the workshop number two uh, for the department heads presenting. I think the next milestone is early September. We're looking to put a preliminary budget out there for Dolly has entered the room, right? Our yes, town clerk. Uh, and be a resolution to approve the tentative budget, which makes it the preliminary budget, and then it's filed with the town clerk. Yep. All right. Still a lot, some heavy lifting to do, um, but we're we're in a good position. We are. All right. Thanks, gang.